So the idea for the Camp Easy came for a need to have a camper that I could take back into the mountains on photography trips. The camper is a culmination of my own design. Um, I basically sat down and figured what I uh, decided were some critical dimensions as far as width and height and comfort for me personally on the inside of a camper. Um, and then I basically just drew an aesthetically pleasing line around that. It's basically a queen size bed on wheels um, with a small outdoor kitchen. The skills that are required to build a teardrop are basically the ones you learn as you build it. Um, I jokingly tell people that I'm an alumni of YTU or YouTube University because that's where I've learned most of what I know. Um, and I, There's quite a bit of knowledge on Facebook. Um, there's also a website called uh, TNTTT or Teardrops and Tiny Travel Trailers. A lot of knowledge in there. but. Gosh, I tell people just to jump in the middle of it and you don't build the whole camper at once. You only build a piece at a time. So you only have to learn about the one particular thing you're working on at the moment. There's a lot of advantages to building a small camper. One of them is you can take it through a drive through window at a restaurant. My father-in-law told me one time that he built his own house and he knows where every flaw is in the house and sometimes it bothers him well it's like that with the teardrop i know where every flaw in my teardrop is but i'm not going to tell you i'll let you find them for yourself i'm going to keep them a secret but they're not too bad so i can live with them so without further ado how about let's take a tour an official tour of the camp easy 5945 teardrop so I'm using a DZ tongue box. Um, I have a marine battery in there for boondocking situations. Right now I don't actually have brakes hooked up, but I do have the brakes already wired if I want to. So the breakaway switch, I'm just using that to keep the tongue box latched. Um, but you'll see I have a little step in there uh, to help my wife get up in the camper. But I've got a, a marine battery in here and I got a 30 amp fuse um, and I've got some accessory uh, terminals there. Um, went ahead and put a light on the inside of the tongue box for nighttime use and I can flip that up and see what I'm doing when I'm trying to hook the camper up in the dark. So that'll work out pretty good. Now one of the things too I did is I put a 110 outlet on the front of the tongue box um, so I can set items up here on the top of it and like chargers for RC airplanes because I do fly planes and my drones um, so I'll be able to plug items in when I'm hooked into shore power or generator and charge those up so I ended up going with fiberglass fenders um, for a 32 Ford pickup truck they're the rear fenders for a 32 Ford now obviously a 32 Ford didn't have fiberglass fenders. These are um, reproduction fenders and they're actually a little wider. They're for guys or gals who are wanting to, I think, put water tires on the back of a 32 Ford for a hot rod. So it worked out perfect for my use. Now I don't have the ability to cut out vinyl graphics, um, but I basically just went into PowerPoint. I know a lot of folks use PowerPoint for, uh, you know, for a lot of things, they're very familiar with the program. I just went into PowerPoint and I made up my own graphics. I made the uh, Camp Easy 5945 logos. I made these big, I'll call them swoops and stripes. I made those. Um, I exported those as a PDF and sent those to a local vinyl cutter. And he had no problem cutting those out and putting those on for me. So it worked out great. Um, and I know I've said it before, but the model 5945 comes from the campers five foot wide, nine foot long, and four and a half foot tall. 
So looking around on eBay, I was absolutely thrilled to find these frameless windows. I just love the look of a frameless window and I put drip caps over them, but on the inside you can see these frameless windows. Um, there's just a crank on the bottom that open out and for a teardrop, I think that's gonna be perfect in that I can have the windows open at nighttime for airflow, even if there's a, um, a rain going on because they're hinged at the top and the drip cap should keep it dry inside. And I just love the super sleek look of a frameless window. When I need to hook into shore power or generator, I put a 30 amp plug on the outside of the camper so I can do that. Um, I ended up going with regular LED trailer lights. I have seen so many trailers over the years have problem with the lights. And I thought, you know, if I'm on a trip somewhere and I have a problem, I can just pull these dudes off, run in an auto zone or a Walmart, buy some more and slap them right back on. So I know they're not fancy, but they're very, very convenient, very practical. Um, I have a porch light that um, turns on and off from the inside and all the lighting, even the porch light is all LED. So let's go on the inside of the camper. Okay, so on the inside of the camper, you'll see I put some reading lights. I put one of those on each side and they have a switch built into the light so each person can have a reading light at night time. And I put two LED dome lights on the ceiling. And those dome lights, uh, you can run both bulbs at once or you can just switch one bulb on at a time. And then I'm using the Max Air Max fan that I painted the trim ring that came with it black. It originally came white and I just painted that black. This thing moves a super, super amount of air. Each side has a cabinet um, that just uses one of these little canvas bins for your clothes. So there's a his side and a her side. I just put another shelf in the middle for storage. So I'm using the WFCO 8735 power panel. That controls both the AC and DC electric. Um, it's a real nice power panel. And I have 12 volt power coming inside the teardrop. Um, one is just a 12 volt round accessory plug and the other is a USB. And those turn off and on with this switch. Um, there's the switch for the outdoor amber porch lights. And then I also have 110 power, or you may call it 120 power on the inside of the camper. Um, and in another video, you'll probably remember where I made these homemade door latches and locks. Um, let me come to the other side so I can show you that a little bit better. This door latch, I have this one taped. I've been doing a test to see if it would move in transit or not. I had one taped and one not, and so far neither one has moved, so I think I'm fine. Um, these door latches will close, and I, I put a, a hole in the top of them, and then this just keeps it locked. So yeah, I think that's gonna work well for me. So this basically is a queen size bed on wheels. Um, right now I'm using an eight inch Coleman air mattress on the bottom and then I have like a three or I guess it's a four inch memory foam topper and this thing is super comfortable. Um, there's a little room left on the end of the camper where I could put some shoes in a trash bag or something and lay them or just use it for extra storage. Um, but yeah, me and my wife, uh, we have plenty of room in this thing. It's super comfortable. I'm glad I went with the five foot wide. So now let's take a look at the galley of the Camp Easy. Um, across the top of the galley, I have four doors that I just use for general storage. The middle two doors, when you open those, you'll see this wooden panel on the inside. Um, there's actually a large hole in the back of the cabinet that is um, an access point to all of the um, uh, components going into the electrical panel or the WFCO panel. And what I've did is I've just put a piece of wood on the back that stands out about two and a half, three inches, and it's actually vented. So any heat that's, um, that's inside the cabinet behind the WFCO panel, it'll have the opportunity to vent. So the Yeti cooler is just on a slide and it pulls out. And actually the Yeti cooler provides additional storage space when it's pulled out. So that works out pretty well. Um, in the bottom, I have the water fill point. Uh, you just use a little bit of a funnel or a hose 
and it fills a five gallon freshwater tank that's located below the camper that's bolted to the floor. Um, and then I have this black colored gray tank. It's not a black tank, obviously. It doesn't hold anything from a sewer, um, but it is a gray water tank, so it'll just have water, soapy water in it. I can pull that out and just unscrew this cap. This pulls out and I can dump that anywhere. And behind that tank is a little 12 volt water pump that is operated by this switch here. Now you can hear it running probably. That's just because it's uh, trying to prime the line. And that runs a single temperature faucet. Now I was just tickled to find a green faucet that matched the uh, green backsplash and all the green accessories I bought for the camper. That was an eBay purchase. And for a sink, I'm just using a, I think it's a 12, maybe a 12 inch stainless steel salad bowl with a marine grade um, drain and stopper that I picked up. I think that was also an eBay purchase. Um, but yeah, using the salad bowl worked out great for that. And if something happens, if this thing ever dents up or scratches real bad, it would just be like six, seven bucks. I could buy another salad bowl to put back in its place. Um, for a cooktop, obviously this is on a slide out drawer. I put a little latch on the back to keep it from closing when you lean up against it. Um, but a two burner cooktop, and I figured I would have um, would have a skillet on one side, maybe frying some sausage in the morning, and put my small coffee percolator on the back of it, and then I just put those up on the trivets. Um, you'll notice I've got 110 power in the corner. This switch turns on a 12 volt accessory plug and then a uh, USB charger from my cell phone. Now this switch turns on lights. I don't know if you can see it or not, but I have color changing um, LED lights recessed underneath the cabinetry. Those on a remote control so I can make those any color I want or change or solid or whatever. Um, and that switch also turns on two dome lights and then they have their own switches on them as well. So there should be plenty of light in the nighttime for the camp easy. And then you can see over on the side where the um, the stove has a quick connect gas line that runs over to this small propane tank. Um, oh, and this rail here is where I can clip on a little side extension table. And then also I have another 110 outlet right here. So I'm not short of places of being able to plug something in. You may have seen in a previous episode where I just took some commercially available T-handles. Um, I put one on each side and I made my own mechanisms that lock the hatch whenever it's closed. Um, there's basically just a pin that will come out of this hole when the, when the latch is turned and then it will plunge into this little washer that I have. Um, I'm pretty happy with the way those latches turned out, but just in case I have a problem when I'm on the road, I went ahead and installed some access panels on either side of the inside of the hatch. That way I can pop those open and work on those mechanisms if I ever have to. Now I do have a, a utensil drawer that's underneath this top drawer, and you can just lean over and open that up. And I put some cutouts um, on either side of the drawer that way you can get in there even when the stove is opened up and get out your dishes and silver or uh, silverware serving spoons and all that so the camp easy is basically a steel frame with a wood um, walled and ceiling structure on top that i insulated and then i covered with pre-painted 40 thousandths aluminum um, I am just super, super happy with the way this camper turned out. I like the, uh, I like the, the shape of it. I like the graphics. Um, I spent a lot of time designing this thing. Probably, I hate to admit this, I probably spent a month or two just drawing it out on paper and on the computer before I ever started building it. Um, but I didn't just want a camper. I wanted a project. I wanted something to work on. And this was so satisfying. I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. Uh, to the point where I'm kind of thinking I'll probably build another one in the future. So I'll be watching for those videos. 
Um, but hey, thank you for joining me on the build of the Camp Easy Teardrop. I'm tickled to be able to show it to you. Um, and I'll even more happy to be able to show it to you out in the wild camping. And I do have a camping trip coming up very shortly. So I have videos coming out of that. Um, there's also some items that I want to add on the Camp Easy. And I'll probably do some videos on that. So stay tuned to the channel, subscribe if you would, like if you like this one. And again, thanks for joining me on the journey. Until next time, take care. We'll see you on the road.